My name is Yawar, and uh, I'm here with my uh, boss, Suhail, and my colleague, Jonas. Guys, uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, what I want to talk about today is uh, uh, just a, an approach, a different approach to implementing, uh, to modeling the abstractions that we do every day on a day-by-day -day basis. So everybody, you know, we, 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 we're all familiar with uh, things like inheritance and, uh, you know, polymorphism and whatnot, but uh, Today's, uh, today I want to talk about something which is uh, uh, maybe a little bit older and it comes from a diff slightly different uh, world, but uh, we can actually uh, implement it really nicely, I think, in Scala. So it just goes to show a little bit of Scala's, the language's flexibility. And uh, it's one of the things that Scala is known for, obviously. So uh, the goal that I'm going to work towards, the, my, my motivation here, is going to be that uh, I want to model that something is clickable and also that something can be draggable. So two, just, just two concepts, uh, nothing you know, complex, just I want to say that something is clickable, something is draggable, and uh, we want to accomplish just one task right now, which is that we want to click, we want to drag something, then after dragging it, we want to click on it. So let's, let's see how we can do that. So uh, some of the things that we find in our analysis is that if something is draggable, then obviously it should be clickable. You need to click on it to drag it. So that's, uh, that's going to be fun to implement. Uh, and we will do the implementation in terms of uh, just a dummy data type, a GUI icon. Just think of it as a, an icon on your desktop. And uh, we're going to pretend that we're actually doing these things, but we're going to print out messages on the console just to show what's happening. So to set up, I'm going to have some common code, some conveniences. And um, the first thing will be that I want to click and drag on and across uh, coordinates, x, y coordinates on my screen. So I just model that as a pair of ints. Uh, very simple. Um, the next thing I want to have is strictly not necessary, but uh, it's just a nice thing to have if you uh, want to do a kind of a, like a data flow style of coding. If you want to show in your code that some, you have something, then you send it into something else, then you send that into something else, you can potentially do that. So I like to do that if I can. So we'll, so we'll have all of this available to us while we're uh, setting up. So uh, let's cover the most familiar approach that we would take usually to model something like this. We would have something is, um, Clickable, we just have a trait, and we'd have a method that says, um, hey, you can click on this uh, at these coordinates, which is our int pair. And uh, we will have a draggable trait, which, uh, following our analysis, we say that it extends the clickable trait. So obviously, you can click on a draggable, and you can also drag the draggable. Uh, you start dragging it at the start coordinates, and you end dragging it at the end coordinates. And uh, we actually do a little bit of default implementation here, which is that uh, we want to set things up so that you, the user, can later uh, do just whatever you specifically need to do. And uh, before you do, we set up the click for you, the, the starting click for you. So we're just going to say that the drag is just a click right now uh, at the starting coordinates. And then later, you're going to do whatever else you need to do. <coughs> uh, so um, we will implement our GUI icon with uh, the, just the draggable trait, because obviously the draggable is also clickable, so our GUI icon is automatically both clickable and draggable. Uh, that's a mouthful. Uh, so we click, and we say that, hey, you clicked on icon text, you know, like recycle bin or whatever, and you clicked on this at, uh, at this pair of coordinates. Um, and it's all direct, uh, of course, and then you have the drag. Uh, you say that, um, I know that I have some base uh, default implementation, so I just uh, use that, I, I reuse that. Then I do my custom stuff, which is just printing some stuff, uh, printing some messages. Uh, hey, you started uh, dragging this from here, and you stopped there. That's it. So that's just the default implementation that I, as the library uh, provider, I give that to you. Um, <clears throat> Or sorry, no. Uh, I give you the traits, and you are the user. You uh, implement your um, the behavior in your custom class, the GUI icon. Uh, and when you want to use it, you just um, 
implement a drag and click operation. Uh, the, the, our goal was, remember, that we wanted to first um, uh, drag something, then we want to click on it. So we just have that as a method, drag then click. We give it a GUI icon, and it does the two things that we needed to do, because we uh, say that the GUI icon uh, can do both those things. So uh, the GUI icon does both those things, very convenient, but at the same time, uh, you're putting all the operations inside a single bag, which is your GUI icon. So all the operations that you might need to do, all the state that you might need to have, they're all going to the same bag. So that's kind of where, where people started to say, uh, hey, you know, uh, maybe it's not a great idea to have all of that stuff in a single place. Because if you keep on adding more and more behaviors, then um, you could uh, mess, or mess with the internal state. Things could go from, you know, if you're expecting A, you could get B, and so on and so forth. So that's you know, uh, kind of where people started to think about, can we do better? So if we think about the type class approach that we use in, you know, most Scala people are familiar probably with this, uh, we would just say that you will have, uh, uh, the, the type class approach is all about separating out the, uh, uh, the behavior from the actual uh, instances which define the behavior and also from the final data type which will use the behavior. So notice the similarities. There's, uh, with inheritance, you're defining that the traits themselves will be derived into your final data type. With the uh, type class approach, you're saying that uh, you will provide a data type A, which will, uh, which will uh, give you whatever data you need so that you can implement those behaviors, clickable and draggable, separately. And you're doing the same uh, final uh, behaviors. You're doing the same things. Ultimately, you're reaching the same goal. But for, so for example, I have a, in the inheritance approach, I have a default drag, which is just a click. In the type class approach, I can um, have a default drag, which is, again, just a click by saying that the thing that I'm giving to drag, my A object, my A value, I will say that take the A, then click uh, on this start coordinates pair. And uh, that becomes my default implementation. And uh, of course, I have my very simple uh, data type, which doesn't have any behavior at all now. So it's completely pure data. So nothing uh, gets mutated, nothing gets um, uh, you know, changed. Let's, com let's look at the implementation of the type class um, instances. Uh, so in this case, what we're doing is that um, we're putting, first of all, we're stashing the implementation as a client of the type classes. We are stashing our instances inside the companion object, obviously very uh, convenient, the Scala best practice and all that stuff. Very nice um, conveniences. So we have our um, clickable instance which just uh, uh, says that here's a new clickable of GUI icon, which can click on these coordinates if you give it this GUI icon uh, value. And the print uh, and the implementation of that is just that uh, it's the same as the implementation as the of the inheritance approach, but just a little more verbose, obviously. But um, I like to use more lines, so that's probably most of it. Um, so with, with inheritance, you were printing the message. With, uh, with the type class approach, again, you're printing the same message. Um, with the draggable, you were uh, <coughs> reusing the clickable instance uh, to uh, start off the click. And then um, by saying that we do a super drag, uh, or rather we call up to the default draggable trait which just says that the drag is a click, and then we uh, do our custom stuff, which is saying that um, the GUI icon text was dragged to the end coordinates. And uh, it's a little cut off, but that's just what it is over there. So you have the click and you have the drag. Again, very um, similar, ultimately the same behavior as the inheritance approach, um, but uh, 
just more verbose, obviously, because you know you have uh, uh, Scala is obviously optimized for inheritance uh, implementations. It has uh, some some syntax support, some upcoming features, some upcoming libraries, which will help you with type with implementing type classes. But if you just do it by hand, this is what it looks like, more or less. Uh, and the ultimate usage is, if you look, if you compare, they're really similar. Uh, when you define your client method, the drag, drag then click, you were uh, directly clicking on the, uh, or rather sending the, the drag and click messages to the GUI icon value, but now you're sending the GUI icon value into your instances, the type class instances, and then, say, and then clicking and dragging through, the, you, through those intermediaries, through the instances. So uh, those behaviors, again, you, you can notice how they're separated out into a different place so that the GUI icon doesn't need to, do, do, doesn't need to know how to do anything at all. All it does is store its data, that's it. Um, and then finally, you just run it, and you have your recycle bin, and you drag and click the recycle bin, and the output will be, um, we expect it to be, um, the recycle bin was clicked at 00, zero. The recycle bin was moved from 00 to 11, and the recycle bin was clicked again at 11. That's uh, what it should be. Um, so, going back to the top, um, type class approach, uh, traits as type classes, uh, objects as instances dashed inside the companion objects, um, and then you use the instances indirectly to do, your, to do whatever behaviors you need to do. Um, simple enough. Uh, let's now get to the meat of the talk, which is that uh, I want to introduce a slightly different way of uh, implementing the same exact uh, thing. So what I'm going to do is, uh, here is um, I'm calling it the modular approach. Obviously, it's not my idea. This is from the ML world, meta language, um, which is implemented by obviously SMLs, uh, OCaml, and all the other MLs that you're going to see floating out there in, on the internet. Uh, so um, what you do here is that uh, with, with the ML approach, instead of having a type class, you say that you're going to have a module type. Um, uh, I'm going to have the clickable module type, and I'm going to have the draggable module type. And I'm going to have, later on, I'm going to show you modules which, uh, which instantiate those module types, these module types. So very similar to the type classes. You have traits. You have the type parameters A, uh, which internally, we do a little twist in, inside the modular approach, is that internally, we um, alias whatever type A we're given to a type T, by convention, we like to have, uh, to, we like to deal with uh, values of type T in our modules because it's just a convention that I wanted to show you the kind of like a pure modular approach that you're gonna find in the ML world. So uh, bear with me for a bit here and uh, it'll be a little bit clearer as we go on. So <clears throat> I have my type T, which is really the A which I, which I was given, um, and I have a, and, I, and I'm able to click on uh, certain coordinates and uh, if I'm given the uh, T value as well. And with draggable, I'm able to drag from, from beginning to, start to end coordinates, again, if I'm given a T value. Uh, and finally, of course, I have the uh, case class, um, the, just a dumb object, which doesn't have any behavior again. It's just a store of data. Um, so those are the module types. The implementation is uh, slightly, uh, maybe, maybe slightly more convoluted. So what's happening with the implementation is that uh, I'm stashing the defaults inside the companion objects of the traits. And with the type class approach, I would not do that. because I would let the user in, uh, create the type class instances and stash them inside the user's data type, uh, companion object to get the nice uh, implicit search scope and all that stuff. Uh, but with the um, modular approach, I had, I'm not using implicits in the, with this pure approach. You could use them later on if you wanted, but to start off with, I'm just showing you the bare bones approach. So <clears throat> what I'm doing here is, in each trade companion object, I'm stashing a, uh, what we call a functor in the ML world which is just a function from a module to another module, which will, or you know, in this case, one of them is not actually a proper functor, it's just a value. 
uh, I'm giving uh, a default um, instance of the clickable uh, module type, which is saying that if I have coordinates and I have whatever t object, then I'm just printing um, clicked at um, the uh, whatever coordinates I have. That's the default. Um, with the draggable module uh, functor, this is actually a real functor now, uh, what we're doing is we're saying that uh, if you give me a clickable, if you tell me that, um, if you give me a clickable, uh, a module of type clickable, then I'll give you back a module of type draggable, which is that um, this is the thing that establishes the relationship that we specified in our analysis before, that if something is draggable, then de facto it also has to be clickable. So the only way that you can get a draggable is if you first have a clickable, and then you pass that into the functor, the functor will give you back a draggable, and you can do your drag operation. So that enforces the invariant. That uh, uh, makes sure that you don't try to bypass, uh, uh, you know, or, or it, uh, it makes it inconvenient to bypass. So that's the default. Then we customize as the user of our uh, of this module uh, of these module types. We will um, say that you know I have this uh, you know I have a GUI I can dummy data type. So what can I what kind of modules can I create with it? Well, um, and, and here I'm stashing the module instances inside the companion object of my client data type. You can do something similar or you can structure it in some other way, uh, that's choice. Um, so the first thing that I'm doing is I'm creating the default clickable uh, module, which is just a simple uh, call to the earlier def, in def apply inside the uh, clickable object, and that just gives me back a clickable of GUI icon. So that says that you have a module now which you can use to do click operations on uh, your GUI icon. Because you gave me a GUI icon, I gave you back a module that, uh, the GUI icon type, um, I gave you back a module which can do these click operations on that type. Um, and now you come to something interesting. You uh, create a draggable module. Um, look how similar, actually, this is to creating clickable and draggable type class instances. You create a draggable module which, um, which actually composes uh, together your uh, default draggable module, which you got by passing in the clickable module from earlier into the draggable. So you got that, and then you create the default instance or the default draggable module, and you store that internally inside your um, exposed draggable module. You want to expose this particular instance of draggable, this particular module, but you internally store the default module, and you use it to implement the um, default behavior, uh, let it do its thing, just like you have in you know, the type class approach, you have a super drag, uh, and in the uh, inheritance approach, you have your super drag again, obviously. Um, so in the modular approach, again, you have the default drag, which is not going up in the hierarchy because that's, there's no inher inheritance uh, exactly. So it's just using the default module. And then it's printing out its custom text or doing its custom behavior, whatever you need to do, um, and saying that, uh, oh, okay, so on top of the default stuff, I have this custom stuff that I want to do, which is just in this case obviously printing the uh, text of the icon from these coordinates to those coordinates. Um, and finally, we come to the usage, which, again, if you look at, if you compare with the type class approach, with the inheritance approach, they're all surprisingly similar. So the modular approach, what you're doing is you're importing your uh, companion objects modules, all the modules that you defined there, which is just clickable and draggable. Uh, you know, if you have them available to you already, already you don't have to import them, whatever it is. Uh, but you just want to make sure that you have them available to you in scope. So now you have them and you do your drag, you do your click. Just like you did before with the type class approach, you use the type class instances to do a drag and a click. Modular approach, you do a drag and a click with the modules. And you have the GUI icon because it's passed into the def. And then you run it, 
you create the GUI icon, recycle bin, you click the you drag the recycle bin, then you click it, and then it tells you the message that uh, you want to see. Um, so yeah, uh, to review, um, I think there's a really some really interesting things that are happening uh, in, in all these approaches, obviously, but um, it seems to me that uh, because of what I mentioned earlier, where with inheritance you're stuffing all of your state and behavior in a single bag, uh, they all have, uh, uh, it's, it's a fairly simple, simplified low level of abstraction because you're not putting things in there in different places. But with type classes and modules, you're putting things in different places. You're putting the data in, in its place, you're putting the behaviors in another place, each behavior in a separate place, and finally you're putting the uh, interfaces, which is the uh, module types and the type classes, and still, again, another place. So they're all very, um, well, they're all modular, uh, really, uh, is the right word for it. So, uh, and of course, this is subjective. People can implement anything using any approach. And obviously, as you can see, <laughs> Scala basically shows you that you can implement everything you like using just um, classic object-oriented programming in the Java style. Um, because all of this stuff is happening by using uh, inheritance and uh, objects and a little bit of syntax sugar on top. Um, so yeah, so that's the, in, in terms of the level of abstraction, you can think about those things. They're interesting to think about. Um, in the level of uh, syntax support, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Scala was obviously designed as an upgrade path from Java. So you have to admit, and there's no way to get around this, is that inheritance syntax is really nice. It's really easy to use. It's really uh, well thought out in Scala. And uh, well, compared to uh, type class and module syntax, if you roll your own, of course. There are things that we can do to mitigate these things. We can use implicits. Best practices in Scala for using implicits uh, go a long way to um, uh, you know, making things nicer, making your syntax nicer. Um, you can use uh, macros if you want. To, uh, and people are doing that. Uh, for example, simulacrum to uh, implement type classes in a nice way, declare and implement. Uh, it, it maybe it might not approach the Haskell level of uh, syntax simplicity, but but it should be pretty okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, in terms of syntax, in terms of uh, abstraction, um, certainly both type classes and the modular approach are more complex. But I think there are definitely wins if you say that I want to have, for example, uh, my default. Um, implementations in one place and uh, you know as default modules and functors and I want to have my custom implementation in my in my own space as me as the user of the client of the library maybe the clickable and draggable library the GUI library so uh, yeah there's definitely some uh, good stuff to think about and um, so uh, that's basically it for my talk um, and, and all this uh, uh, the, all these slides are available at, in GitHub, on GitHub, and uh, I have an article which uh, some people liked, um, again, in GitHub. And so, yeah, I just want to thank everyone, and uh, thank you to uh, Suhail, my boss, and my colleague Jonas at Mediative, <coughs> because they helped me out a lot with this, and uh, they gave me a lot of feedback, a lot of suggestions. So, yeah, thanks, guys.